Okay, so today's daf is daf Yud Beis Amid Aleph, uh, and we're holding about uh, about eight lines from the top of the uh, daf on daf Yud Beis, and we had discussed yesterday uh, this this uh, this idea of uh, what the seder was of Kriyashma and of the tefillahs that they did in the Beis Hamikdash. So we said a quote from the Brisa: "Vekorin Aseres Hadibros." They read the Ten Commandments. Shema, the paragraph of Shema, Vahoyim Shemoya and Vahoyim Shemoya, Vayomer and then Vayomer. And then they went into MS Viatsiv, Avoda Ubirchas Kohanim. Okay? So now the Gemara has a, uh, a discussion. Amar of Yehuda Amar Shmuel. Af Bigvulin Bikshu Likris Kane. Also, Bigvulin means uh, literally the boundaries or the borders, but it's a reference to outside of the Beit HaMikdash. Uh, they also, uh, they, 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 they thought of, or, or so according to some opinions, they actually implemented the idea of to read as such meaning to read the Aseris Adibros with Shema. They thought it would be a great idea. Uh, we read Shema, and Aseris Adibros are also, you know, uh, of the fundamentals. So they would read Aseris Adibros also. So they wanted to do that. Uh, and um, they, they, was a, they were already mavatal that uh, that institution, that takana, because of Tarumas Haminim. Okay, which means the Minim, who were the heretics, uh, who only believed in the written Torah, uh, they would come and they would uh, give them a hard time. They'd rough it up the people over there and they would say, look, I can prove to you that the the uh, the only uh, valid Torah is the written Torah and the uh, the Ten Commandments because that's what you say every day and the rest of the oral stuff is just made up. So they, they actually uh, nullify this this uh, institution of saying Nasser Sedibris every day. Tanya Nami Hachi, the first word in the line, Tanya Nami Hachi, also learned similarly in another Bryce that says, Rav Nassan Omer, Rav Nassan says, Big Vulin, Big Shu Likros Kane. Also, Big Vulin, uh, they wanted to do uh, this this concept of saying Nasser Sedibris, the Ten Commandments. Elishik Far Bitlum, Apne Tarumus Aminim. Okay, and Rabba Babar Chana Savar Mikveinu Besura. He wanted to institute that they should say the Aseret Sedibros every day in Sura. And Amar Le Rav Chizda Kfar Bitlo Mepnei Tarumas Haminim. Okay, because these heretics that would come uh, and cause problems. And Ameimar Savar Mikveinu Bar Harda. Ameimar wanted to uh, institute that you say the Sedibros in in Harda. And Amar Le Rav Ashi Kfar Bitlo Mepnei Tarumas Haminim. Now some of the commentaries point out that the language of Kfar Bitlo doesn't mean that they already said you shouldn't do it. Kfar Bitlo means they already uh, annulled it, meaning that they had at one point tried, in fact, to uh, to to maintain the Aseris and they and they, it wasn't just theoretical, uh, the concept was very much practical and realistic that, that the the medium had come, the heretics had come, and given them a hard time. So they had stopped saying Aseris and uh, every day with Krishma. Okay, and then we said that the two dots. The Gemara continues, and we the quote we had earlier is B'Shabes Mosif and Brachas Achas Lamishmar Hayot. So we know that the way it was instituted was uh, that even during the beginning of the before the Beis Hamikdash was built, there was too many Kohanim uh, to, to to work the Avod in the Beis Hamikdash. So they divided it uh, into twenty four Mishmaros. The the, uh, the the twenty four rounds, and it means every Kohen would have a chance of serving. Uh, twice a year, okay, for two weeks a year, uh, and uh, the way it worked is on Shabbos afternoon, the Mishmaros would change, the groups, the watches would change of the uh, of the Kohanim who were doing the Avoda. So on Shabbos, Mosif and Bracha Achas, the Mishmar Hayot, they would add another Bracha to the Mishmar that was leaving. So the Gemara says, my Bracha Achas, what was this Bracha? Amar of Chelboi, Mishmar Hayot, Amar le Mishmar HaNechnas, the Mishmar that was leaving would say the Mishmar that was coming in, Misha Shachin Eshemo Babayis Hazer, he who uh, resides, his, his name in this house, Hashem, who yishkem b'neichem ahava v'achva v'shalom v'reus. He should uh, uh, let to reside between you uh, love, brother, brotherhood, peace, and companionship. And uh, the commentaries explain that the Kohanim, specifically the Kohanim, needed this blessing. The Kohanim were a very passionate kind of people, as we know, and they would actually fight on different avodas. As brought in sukkah, they had the uh, the the uh, different fights that were caused uh, on the on the mizbeach originally. That they let people just first come, first serve, and it created actually, you know, physical harm to people. So the Kohanim were a very passionate people, so they needed this blessing of that they should have peace and harmony uh, also in the Avoda. Okay? Now the Gemara continues. A quote from our Mishnah, we had said in the Mishnah, Makom Sha'amru Laharech Ein Rishai Lekatzer. And we said in a, in a place where the tefillah is a long tefillah, you can't make it short, or when short, you can't make it long. Uh, and the end of it was, in a place where they, um, they, they instituted the end to the bracha, you can't not end it. Or when they did not have an end, you can't end it. The ending meaning, like we say a bracha of Yotzar, or Choshech, or Shalom, or Yotzar, and at the end, we say Baruch Atah Hashem, 
right? So that ending is called a lachtom. So the Gemara says like this, okay? Pshita. It is simple, it is uh, simple to understand. Now we're going to go to a completely different concept over here, but it's very much going to come back to our uh, original Mishnah, okay? de kanakit kasa de chamra biyade. Okay. Now the idea is is that if uh, wine and beer have two different brachas, right? Wine one makes bore pri hagafen, and on beer one makes a shahakol nihiya bidvaro. Okay. We know that uh, if one is holding in his hand hechet de kanakat kasa de chamra biyade, he's holding a cup of wine in his hand vekasavar de shichru, and he thought uh, it was it was beer. Upasachem. I'm sorry, the opposite. He was holding a cup of beer in his hand vekasavar de shichru, and he thought it was wine. Upasachem avarach adaita de shichra, and in his mind he kept thinking, okay, I'm going to make a bar priagaf and barachat to Hashem. Right, the Sayyim uh, um, and he and he finished with the wine. Okay, so again, the case is he's holding a cup of wine in his hand. Just to be clear, he's holding a cup of wine in his hand, and uh, he he thought it was beer. Okay, so he in his mind he was gonna make uh, a shahakal. He was gonna say Baruch Ata Hashem shahakal nevidvara, and then midway through, after he said Baruch Ata Hashem, he remembered that it in fact was wine, and he said Bari Priyagafen. Okay, the halacha is that yatsa he is yotzi. Why? Di'inami im amar shahakol nebedvaro. If he in fact had completed the bracha and said the wrong bracha, right? The whole time he thought it was beer and really it was a cup of wine. So now he's holding it and he says baruch ata Hashem, uh, and he's about to say shahakol uh, nebedvaro. And instead and he remembered it's a priyagafen. Even if he had said the wrong bracha and he had said shahakol nebedvaro, he still would have been yotzi. He would have uh, fulfilled his obligation for the bracha. To hatsna we learned in a mishnah. Al kulan on all of the different kinds of of, of foodstuffs. Im Amar Shachol Nihiyeh Bedvaro. If one says Baruch Atah Hashem, blessed are you Hashem. Shachol Nihiyeh Bedvaro. That everything uh, comes from your word. You create everything. That really includes everything. Yatsa Hibiyotzi. Okay, so in this case, uh, again, we're going to bring this back to our, our scenario over here, but for our purposes now, uh, this case again is one who is holding a cup of, 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 um, of wine in his hand. He thought it was beer, he thought about making a shahakal, and he remembered halfway through, and he said the right bracha of Bari Priyagaf, and he's Yosi, because even if he would have completed and said shahakal, it would have been okay. Ella, only, heichot de kanakit kasa de shechra Right, where he's holding a cup of beer, the kasar de chamra, and he thought it was wine. Pasuk baruch atayt de chamra. He thought he was going to make a bari priagafen. He said to himself, baruch atah Hashem, and then then he realized, he remembered, oh, it's really a Heineken. V'sayim bid shechra, and he finished and said, shachol ni abedvaro. Okay, my, what's the halacha? Now, what's the question? Basar ikar bracha azlinan. Do we go after the ikar bracha? Now, the ikar bracha is baruch atah Hashem, blessed are you Hashem. So, when he was originally holding this uh, this cup of, of Heineken in his hand, and he was thinking that it was a cup of wine, he said baruch atah Hashem. His kavana was to say bore pri hagafen. Now, if he would have made a bore pri hagafen, he would have not fulfilled his obligation because bore pri hagafen is in fact not uh, not doesn't include chamra. Uh, it doesn't include beer, because beer is made from hops or from uh, dates, different kinds of beer, but it's not made from the vine. It's not made from Bari Priyagafen. So, Basar, Iker, Bracha, Azlina, do we go after the Iker Bracha, which means the part of Baruch Atah Hashem, when in his mind he was completely focused on the fact that he was going to be making a Bari Priyagafen, or Basar Chasima Azlina, do we go after the completion, where in fact the Chasima was right. He remembered just in the nick of time, and he said shahakol niyebidvaro to uh, to have the right bracha on his beer. So what is the halacha? So Tashma, come in here. Okay, now we're going to bring it back to our discussion over here. Shachris in the morning on Shachris. Pasach biyotzer or if you started saying the brachas of Krishma, and he started with yotzer or, which is the right bracha. V'sayim b'mar varavim. And he made a mistake, and he thought it was the night. The, the, and he was reading from the wrong part of the siddur. It was early in the morning. He was uh, very tired, and he started saying the brachas of Krishna. And, and he ended with Marav Aravim, Lo Yatsa. He's not Yatsa because that Marav Aravim is bringing the night, and that's the brach of Krishna at night. Pasach b'Marav Aravim. If he started with Marav Aravim, v'siyem biyotzar, and he remembered halfway through that uh, it's in fact the morning, and he finished with Baruch Atah Hashem Yotzar Marav. Yatsa, he's going to be Yotzi. 
Okay. Similarly, Arvis, if you started uh, with at night, and he was saying the the uh, the the brachas of Krishna at night, and Pasach b'Mariv Aravim, he has started with Mariv Aravim. V'siyem b'Yotzer Ar Layatza, because again he's completing it, the bracha with the wrong bracha. Pasach b'Yotzer Ar, if he started with Yotzer Ar, v'siyem b'Mariv Aravim, Yotzer is going to be Yotzi because he ended it right. Klali Shaltavar, the rule of the matter is, and then the Brisa says, Hakol Holech Achar Hachitum. Everything goes after the completion. Meaning, the beginning of the Baracha, if you mess up and you have the wrong concentration, the wrong thing in mind, it's okay as long as the completion of the Baracha is the right Baracha. You're completing it the right way. So, what, we, what can we see? We can see from here that our question was when one is holding a cup of beer and he thinks he's going to make Baracha to Hashem, he's having in mind that he's going to make a Bori Priya Gafen, thinking that it was wine. And then he remembered halfway through and in fact completed it correctly in such a hakol ni'iyah bedvaro. The halacha is that that is still good, right? So if we should learn from here that hakol ho'ilach achar hachitum and that it, it should be fine. Everything should be fine for him. So what's the halacha? And we should see from here that it should be fine. So the Gemara says, no, that's not a good proof. Why? Shani hasam. Over there is different. Over there, meaning again in reference to the brachas of Yotzer are to Ka'amar Baruch Yotzer Hamaoros, because the way it works is the beginning of the bracha we say we start with Yotzer uh, Hamaoros, we start with um, we start with the bracha of of Yotzer of Arachesha Chesed Shalom Varisakol, and then we continue uh, in the bracha, and as we continue in the bracha, we we at the end we say Baruch Ato Hashem, and at night we say Hamar Varavim, and in the morning we say Yotzer Hamaoros. So therefore, we have almost a com- another small bracha within the bracha. So it's not only is he completing it correctly, but he's completing it correctly with the full bracha. Baruch atah Hashem, Yotzar Amaris. He's saying Hashem's name. So the Gemara says, Hani Rav, that makes sense according to Rav. Now we have a machlokas, uh, Rav and Rav Yochanan, about what is the nature of a bracha. Okay, to be considered a real bracha, does it have to have Baruch Atah Hashem, as long as there's Hashem's name in it? Or does it in fact have to have Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam? Okay, which is called Malchus, which is the kingship of Hashem. So the Gemara says, according to Rav, who says that Kol Bracha Shein Bay Askar Hashem in a bracha, that any bracha that doesn't have Hashem's name is not a bracha, but if it has Hashem's name, it is considered a bracha, then Shapir, Shapir means it's correct, it's good, because by Yotzar Ha'ar, Yotzar Ma'oros, what does he say at the end? He says, Baruch Ata Hashem Yotzar Ha'maros. But El Rav Yochanan, according to Rav Yochanan, Damar Kol Bracha Shein Bay Malchus in a bracha, that it has to have Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech Olam to be considered a full bracha. Mayak Elameimar. In the case of Yotzar Ma'oros, at the end, even though original intent doesn't really matter, is it full intention, what really matters is what occurs at the end. Okay? What's what's at the end? And at the end, he's saying, Baruch Ato Hashem, Yotzer Mar, so it's not a good proof. But according to Rav Yochanan, he's not really saying a bracha, because all he's saying is, Baruch Ato Hashem. He's not saying, Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, which is prerequisite for Rav Yochanan to be considered a bracha. So the Gemara says, three lines into the wide lines, Kevan de Omar, Kevan de Omar Rabba Bar Ula, since Rabba Bar Ula said that the reason we had him earlier, the reason why we bring down, we say, uh, Yotzer Mar, we say, we say, uh, we say, night, during the day, a mention of, of Yotzar of Orechoshech, right, during the night and during the day, is because to have a mention of the attributes of the day at night, when, we're, when it's night time, and the attributes of the night during the day. So therefore, ki ka'amar bracha umalchus mi kara atavayu ka'amar. When he's saying baruch ato Hashem, elokeinu melech olam, Yotzar Ma'oros in the beginning, it's as if uh, he is it's as if he is uh, he is fully uh, um, he's 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 is as if his his concentration is going completely on the uh, on the uh, on the on the whole bracha, okay. Um, okay, is that better? Do you hear me now? Okay. So the Gemara continues four lines down. So again, we're, we're still stuck. We don't have a proof. We tried to bring a conclusive proof from here from Yosar Maris, and we said, uh, according to both reasons, but the way it comes out, it's not a good proof, okay, because it's different. So what's going to be in our case that we brought here about where one is holding a, a cup of, of beer, thinking that it's grape juice or wine, and he's, he has intent at the beginning of the Iker Bracha, the wrong intention of Bor Priyagaf, and at the end, he remembers the right one. So the Gemara says, Tashma mi Seifa, because the Brisa, we had a quote, we said, Klalay shall Davar, the, the principle of the matter, 
Now, what is the principle of the matter? That the most important, everything that goes after the completion, how you complete it. So the Gemara says, Now, what is what is this principle coming to include? It must be coming to include other cases. Is it not coming to include our case that we just brought about the beer and the wine? So that should be an answer. So the Gemara says, It's coming to include a different case concerning bread and dates. So the Gemara says, hey, Chadami, what, what's the case of bread and dates? Similarly, if it's talking about Da'achal Nahama, a man ate bread. He thought he ate dates. And therefore he wants to bench, he wants to do Birchat HaMazon at the end. And he started saying, Hashem. And he thought he was just going to say the uh, the after bracha of the three bracha, right? The bracha of, of Allah Mechia, which will be Allah Eitz, right? He thought he was going to make an Allah Eitz on the Tamari of dates. And then after he said, Baruch Hashem, he remembered that that it was bread. So he figured out it was bread. So he said, actually, Okay? So if that's the case, that's exactly our case. Why? Because in the case of bread and uh, dates, the after bracha that's said on bread uh, is obviously birchat the full birchat And the after bracha that's said on dates is only Allah uh, eats. Allah eats, Vial Priel eats, right? Now, if one actually. Um, it says the full Birchat Amazon on dates, as we're going to see in a minute, that's uh, that's actually going to work. But if one says Allah eats on uh, a bread, that's not going to work. So if the case is talking about where one uh, had eaten bread and he thought he had eaten dates, now if he says Baruch Atah Hashem and he continued with the Allah eats, uh, as as he thought he was going to do, he would have not have been fulfilled his obligation over the bread. So that's exactly our question, because if in that case we go after the chitum, whatever the completion was, uh, and in fact he completed it right, then that would be an answer for our case in the wine uh, and the beer. So the Lord Srikh Gemara says it can't be that case. Must be talking about going to Achal Tamari. He in fact had eaten dates. The Kasavar Naham Achal, and he thought he ate bread. So therefore, when he came time for Brichat Amazon or after Bracha, Upasach Bidanahama. He started saying as he started saying Baruch Atah Hashem with the in mind to uh, to say Hazan Esayilam Kulei Betuvai. But then after saying Baruch Atah Hashem, he realized, oh, I ate dates. So Vesayim Bidet Tamari, he he only said the Allah eats after Yatsa. He's going to fulfill his obligation. Why? Tafilu Vesayim Bidet Hamal. Because even if he had completed and continued and said Hazan Esayilam Kulei Betuvai, Yatsa he would have fulfilled his obligation. My timer, why is that? Because the Tamari Nami Mezen Zaini. Because the concept of what we say, Hazanis Olaman, uh, the full blessings of the Birchat Amazon, is on what sustains us. And dates can fill one up, and they can also sustain a person, and therefore you could have been Yotzi. So what comes out uh, is that we don't have a conclusive answer here about the halacha uh, regarding uh, the beer and the wine. And there's a discussion in the in the in the early commentaries and we're shown and talk about Tosas over here. You can see after who has discussed what will come out what will come out in the halacha in that case. Okay. Now the Gemara continues. Two dots. Amar Rabba Bar Chinina Saba Mishmei Rav. Rabba, the son of Chinina, the elder, in the name of Rav, said, "Kol Shlei Omar Ms Viatzev Shachris the Ms Viemuna Arvis Lo Yatsa Yidei Chavaso." Okay. Whoever does not, we know it when we say Ma'ariv, when we daven Ma'ariv. We know uh, that there's um, that there's um, we know that there's an obligation when one says Mayrev to uh, to say after after Shema the Ms Viatsev in the morning Ms Viatsev Yachav Mikayim Yashar which primarily talks about the Brach of God Yisrael which primarily talks about the um, the the miracles God performed of us for us when He was taking us out of Egypt, etc. Uh, uh, etc. Et and we split the sea. Uh, and and the, at night we say Emes Muna, which is basically uh, Rashi explains Emes Muna talks about the good and the that Hashem is going to do for us in the future that we're waiting for Him to do for us to keep His promises to us and to to guard us our lives and so, and so on and so forth. Uh, so who says the Gemara Amar Rabba Bar Chinina Saba Mishmei Derav Kol Shaloi Amar Emes Viatzim Shachris. If you didn't say this the bracha of Emes, of Emes Fiatsev that turns into Gal Yisrael after Shema in the morning and he didn't say Emes Fiamuna Arvis or at night he did not forgive, fulfill his obligation of saying Shema the way the rabbis instituted it that's how most of the majority of the commentaries explain some say that no he, he they, the rabbis even uprooted his responsibility uh, and he didn't say Shema at all he has to actually pre- repeat Shema completely Shenema like it says to say over your kindnesses in the morning 
morning, which is a reference to past deeds of taking us out of Egypt, splitting the sea, what we talk about in MSV Atzif, and your acts of faith, and your faith, Balelos, at night, right? The night is uh, usually brought down as the time of... Um, which is a reference to the gullus of the darkness of not being able to see when there's a there's a, uh, a, a there's an aspect of amuna of faith uh, a leap of faith that that takes place. Okay, now we're we're five lines from the bottom of Yud Beis Amid Aleph, and the Gemara continues two dots. Another quote from the same Rabbi Bar the elder in the name of Rav. Hamispalel, one who prays, Kishahu Korea. When he bows, when he has to bow, when he gets to a place where he has to bow, like in the first beginning of the bracha, or uh, wherever we bow, korea b'baruch, he bends his knees at baruch, okay, the word baruch, ukujo zokev, when does he straighten himself out? Zokev b'shem, he does it uh, right before saying Hashem. So we say baruch, bend, ata, and then pick yourself up with Hashem's name. Amar Shmuel says, Shmuel, my time at Rav, what's the reason? Tichsiv, the verse says, Hashem zokev kifufim. So when we get to Hashem, we stand up straight. Hashem uh, uh, makes, makes, uh, makes straight the bent over ones. Okay? Now the Gemara asks, Mesve, I have a b'raisa, that's a question. Because it says, Mipnei shemi nachas, right? Mipnei shemi nachasu, before my name, he is humbled. Okay, which the Gemara seems to be saying. Uh, the question is, it seems to be saying that Hashem's name, we should be bent over. We shouldn't be standing up straight. So the Gemara says, Mipnei shemi ksiv. Right? So the more answer is It says it doesn't say Bishmi uh, by my name you should be bent over, right? But Mipneshimi before my name. So we actually bend Baruch Ata and then we pick ourselves up Hashem. So before Hashem's name we're bent over, and when we say Hashem's name, we're standing up. Shmuel told Chia the son of Rav. Bar Urian. Okay, Urian, which is a which is a reference to son of a, a son of son of the Torah, okay, or a Talmud Chacham, or son of great ones. Tav Milsa. Come and I'll tell you Milsa Ma'alyasa da Amar Avucha. There's some beautiful things your your father used to say. Hachi Amar Avucha, this is what your father said. Kishu Korea, when we bow, Korea Babarach, U Kishu Zokev, when we stand up straight, Zokev Peshem, we stand up straight with the saying of Hashem's name. Okay? Rav Sheshis, we're on the top of Yud Beis Amud Beis. Rav Sheshis, Ki Kakara, Kara Ki Chizra, Ki Kazakav, Zakav Ki Chiyuva. When he would bend down, he would bend down like a stick, and when he would go up, he would go up like a snake. Okay, he would first put his head up, and then the rest of his body. Uh, some other commentaries learn it the opposite. The Gra learns that he would put his body up and keep his head down like a snake, so you keep his keep your eye on him, uh, keep his eye on you, and uh, then put up his head. Okay, and the Gemara continues another quote from Rabbi Bar Chinnah. Rabbi Rabbi Bar Chinnah, Saba Mishmed Rav, the elder, in the name of Rav, Kol Hashan Akula, the whole year around Adam Mispal Hakel Hakadosh and Melech Ohed Zdaka Mishpat. We know that we say Hakel Hakadosh uh, in the the third bracha of Shmon Esrei, uh, the holy God, and we say in the eleventh bracha Melech Ohed Zdaka Mishpat, the King who is a loving Zdaka uh, Mishpat. Okay. Chutz me asar yamim. Besides, for the ten days that are shabain Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, that are between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, she mispalel hamelach hakadosh. We say the King who is holy, the hamelach hamishpat, and the King that judges. Okay, it's a time of judgment. Uh, the ten days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and therefore we change it to the malchus of the kingdom. For Rav Lazar Amar, Rav Lazar says, "Afilo Amar Hakel Hakadosh Yatsa." He argues and says, even if one said Hakel Hakadosh during this period between the ten days of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, he is Yotzi. Should never the verse says, Vayigba Hashem Tzivakos by Mishpat. Hashem, the master of legions, raised himself up in, in Mishpat, okay, in judgment. And the, and the holy God was holy, became holy through the Tzedakah. So, Eimasai, Vayigba Hashem Tzivakos. When does it say the verse, Vayigba Hashem picked himself up uh, by Mishpat in judgment, which we know is a reference to Elu Asar Yavim, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Hashem is in judgment in the days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Vekaamar, and still it says, Hakel Hakadosh, right? The verse said, Vayigba Hashem Tzivakos by Mishpat. When does Hashem pick himself up? The, the, the Hashem will pick himself up in judgment, and we know that's a reference to the ten days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and still it says, HaKel HaKadosh Niktvash Pitzdaka. So it refers to Hashem as Kel HaKadosh and not Melech HaKadosh, and therefore says, uh, his opinion is, uh, Rebbe Lazar's opinion is, is that you could still be Yotzi if you said HaKel HaKadosh. 
Okay, so the Gemara asks, "My have Allah? What's the what's the halacha?" Amar Rav Yosef, Akel Hakadosh, Omelach Oiv Tzaka Mishpat. We say Akel Hakadosh, Omelach Oiv Tzaka Mishpat. And Rabba says, "We say Omelach Hakadosh, Omelach Hamishpat." The Hilchos like Rabba, and the halacha is like Rabba that we in fact um, do during the ten days between Omelach Hakadosh, Omelach Hamishpat. And if one said Akel Hakadosh instead of Omelach Hamishdash, Omelach Hakadosh, he in fact has to begin from the beginning of his tefillah. Okay, now two dots. The Gemara continues. Another quote from Rabbi Barchina, the elder in the name of Rav. Anyone who's in a position where he has a friend, where he knows someone who's sick, or is in need of tefilos, and he does not pray for him, he's called a sinner. like the verse says, Okay. Now this uh, this is a verse where he said uh, uh, the beginning over there where Shmuel said uh, you know it should be a sin for me if I don't daven uh, to take care of you right. So basically this is a reference to the fact that he said it was a sin chalilali michatos lashem that I would I would perform a sin by not uh, by not praying for your your health okay for praying that you everything is okay. Amar Rava, Rava says, in Talmud Chacham, who, if he's a Talmud Chacham, who's sick, Sarach Shiyich La'atz Ma'elav. It's not enough just to pray for him. You actually have to make yourself sick with worry and prayer. Okay? How do we know this? My Taima. So the Umar says, Elema Mishim Dechsev, the verse says, Ve'ein chole michem alai, ve'golez ozni, right? That that this is a verse by, um, by, um, by David HaMelech, right? That it says that no one's making them sick over me. Sorry, uh, I believe this is by Shol. But by Shaul, okay, he said that no one's making themselves sick over me. Says the Gemara, maybe Melech Shani, maybe a king is different, okay? And therefore, a king you have to, but a regular Talmud Chacham, you wouldn't have to. And let me help only from here, because the verse says, levushi sak, anisi nafshi, uchfilasi al tashuv. Okay, and this was uh, uh, where it wasn't a king, and he still made himself sick uh, for the Talmud Chacham, who, was, who, uh, who, who, had, uh, who had gotten sick. Okay, so the Gemara says. The Gemara continues. Rabbi the son of and this in the name of Rav. Whoever does uh, an avera and he's embarrassed about it, forgive him for all his sins. Shenemar, like the verse says, you know, I remember and I was embarrassed. Okay, well, so Hashem said that this is a by Yecheskel. Hashem said you remember and you'll be embarrassed and there'll be no more uh, when I there'll be no more uh, destruction or embarrassment uh, for that that you had son you had sinned. So you see that if you if one uh, actually is embarrassed for for doing a chet, he's uh, forgiven for all of his sins. Okay, it says the Gemara Dilma Tzibur Shani. That's only when uh, a congregation. That verse is talking about all of Klai Yisrael. So only when a tzibur, uh, a congregation as a whole, is mitbayesh, okay, is embarrassed. So Dilma uh, tzibur shani, Allah mehacha from here. Vayomer Shmuel Shal Shmuel told Shal Loma Hergas Tani Lahalos Ozi. Okay, why did you bother me to bring me up? Now the story over there was that Shoal was uh, was freaking out uh, and he needed help and no one, none of the prophets were helping him and Hashem wouldn't answer him from the Urim Vitumim, uh, which he left out because uh, the Urim Vitumim, Shoal had gone and killed the whole city of the of, of Nov or the Kohanim of Nov, so uh, the Urim Vitumim wasn't answering him. So he needed help. So what did he do? Shmuel had recently died and Shoal called on one of the rich witchcraft people to uh, to actually make Shmuel rise from the grave uh, in order to uh, to ask him for help and what he should do. So Shmuel came out of the grave and told Shaul, Lomahir Gastani Lahalosasi, why are you bothering me to bring me up? Fayomer Shaul Shaul told him Tsar Limi Od, I'm I'm in a lot of distress, Uplishtim Nilchaman be and the the Plishtim are 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 warring with me. Okay, for Hashem sar me alai, and Hashem has left me. V'lo yareni oid gambiad and neviim gad becholaymes. He's not answering me by the hand of his prophets. He's not answering me through dreams. V'eker lachad, I'm calling to you. Lo diani ma'asa, what I should do? 
Now, in the quote over there, like I mentioned, he didn't say about the Urim Vitumim. The Urim Vitumim was the breastplate where we had mentioned earlier uh, with the Crazy Oplacy that they would ask questions to the Urim Vitumim and would give concise answers based on the letters on the breastplate of the Kohen Gadol. So, Ilu Urim Vitumim, like Omar, he didn't tell Shmuel that he'd been asking. Mishum Dekatli Lenov Irakohanim, because he was embarrassed that he had killed the whole city of Novi Irakohanim. The story over there was that uh, the Kohen Gadol had supported David Amelech, who was, who was uh, in a Shaul felt was the threat to him. So Shaul held that uh, that uh, the Kohen Gadol and all the, the city of Novi Irakohanim was responsible for murdered Bamalchus for rebelling against the king, and he destroyed them. So the Gemara says, How do we know that Shaul was forgiven? Shneemar, at the end, Shmuel told Shaul, Umachar ato banecha imi. You and your sons will be with me, meaning you will be with me in my place in heaven. Now this was a uh, this was a forecast uh, that Shmuel, that Shaul was going to die with his sons, but uh, nevertheless, you see that he was forgiven and he was in Olam Haba in in, in Gan Eden, where where uh, in paradise where Shmuel himself was located. Okay, because he was embarrassed of the sin he had done. Two lines into the wide lines, Vamer of Yochan or Yochanan says, "Imi b'mechitzasi." Okay, so you and your sons will be with me, me with me in my in my chamber here, in my in my special section in uh, in heaven. For Rabbanan Amri Mihacha, Rabbanan say from here. What, what was from here? How do we know that Shaul was forgiven? Because the pasuk says, "Va'akonam la Hashem," and we will hang them to Hashem. Be'givat Shaul in the valley of Shaul. Bechir Hashem, the chosen one of Hashem. Now the story over there was the Givonim. Uh, they were very upset that uh, that Shaul had uh, uh, Shaul for he had. Uh, he, basically, the story was is that when Shaul had killed the city, the, the city of of Nov with all of their Kohanim, the, they had actually had a. Uh, he caused another harm uh, through that, and that harm was is that the Givonim, the Givonim were the sort of second rate, uh, se- second rate citizen status uh, amongst Klal Yisrael, but they were the people who converted because of the lions earlier, uh, because they were afraid. And they weren't sincere. But what happened was, is that their livelihood was based on the city of Nov, because they were the water carriers and the wood choppers of the city of Nov. So once the city of Nov was completely uh, decimated uh, in one moment, they actually lost all their ability to, to survive. Okay? So was, uh, the, the Pasa considers as if they, uh, that Shaul had actually killed them. Okay, so they were very upset with Shaul. So they wanted revenge. So what they came, to, they came to uh, David, and they told David the only way the famine that that uh, that was happening out in 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 Israel at that time was the three years of famine was was because of this uh, because of these givonim. So he, he understood that uh, that he had to make make well with them. So he went to them and said, "How can we how can we make this all did?" So they said, "We want to kill." dead seven descendants seven children grandchildren of Shaul okay so uh, David agreed to it uh, and realized that they had to do this uh, to make a Kiddush Hashem to show that they cared about the honor of even these second class citizens so what he did was is he brought the Aaron out and he made the, the descendants of Shaul walk in front of the Aaron and the Aaron picked who were the seven to be um, and they so the, the Pasuk says and they they wanted to hang to Hashem in, in the valley of Shaul the Shaul Okay, and the verse says that they wanted to hang to Hashem, Bechir Hashem. Okay, Givat Shaul in the Valley of Hashem, who, who the Valley of Shaul, and who was the, the Shaul? Bechir Hashem, the chosen one of God. Now, it doesn't make so much sense because the, here they wanted to hang his descendants because of the evil that he that they the claim that he had done to them. So why would they call him the chosen one of God? So the Gemara says Yatzitza Baskal, four lines from the wide lines, in the middle. A, vo- a baskal came out, a voice from heaven came out. Hashem. It wasn't them who had said Bechir Hashem. It was a baskal that said Bechir Hashem. So we see that Shaul was indeed forgiven uh, for the sin of Novi uh, um as we have seen from this Pasuk. Okay? Amr Yehuda Bikshu Parshas Balak Bekrishma. Okay. Now we had talked about uh, uh, earlier in the uh, on Amalaf, the concept of how they had uh, they had instituted saying in in the Beis Hamikdash the uh, the parsha of the Asaras of Tibrus, and why they didn't do it outside the Beis Hamikdash because they were uh, having problem with the heretics who claimed that this was the only part of the valid Torah. 
Okay, so now they also wanted to add that you should say the Parsha of Balak. Now the Parsha of Balak with the story of Bilam uh, cursing and the beautiful blessings that he ended up giving, and they wanted to add it to Krishma. And why did they not institute it? Bishum because it's very long, because it's a uh, it's, it's several it goes on and on and on, and it would have uh, been a Tirchur Tzibur to say so many paragraphs. So my so why did they add it? Because it's the verse that says, Kel that Hashem took him out of Mitzrayim. Okay, so which is sort of a reference to what we say in the paragraph of Ayomer, which talks about going out of Egypt. So Lema Parsha's ribis. You could just say the Parsha of ribis, of usury, the halachas of usury of, of uh, interest, where over there it also has a mention of going out of Egypt, or the Parsha that ref, that, that uh, discusses in the Torah uh, the halachas of different weights and had a way, also says Kel Motzim Mitzrayim that God took you out of Egypt over there, a reference to going out of Egypt. So, and those are shorter Parsha, so it wouldn't be a Tircha de Tzibura. So why don't you say one of those? Um, the Gemara says, mishum ba There was a specific verse that that waxed very poetic to be uh, equated with, with the Shema to be said with the Shema. And what was the pasuk? Kara shochav, kara shochav ka'ari. Okay. This is a verse again in the pasuk uh, in, in the parsha of Balak, and it says, Kara shochav ka'ari uchilavi mi kimenu. Okay, lies like a lion, and like a lion cub, who can get him up? That's how the strength of Kalei the be- the greatness of the Jewish people, okay? Uh, very much, like I said, seems to fit with Shema, where we say, B'shach B'chavah with the lying down. So this was a Pasuk that was a reference to uh, the beauty of Kalei the greatness of Kalei which also seemed to be a good juxtaposition uh, with the with the B'shach B'chavah of, Klai- of, of Krishma. So it says, the Gemara of Alema, high Psuka Vesulai. So they like that Pusik. Why don't they just take that Pusik, add it to Krishma? They don't have to say the whole Parsha. So the Gemara answers Gemiri, we have a tradition that Kol Parsha to Pusika Moshe Rabbeinu, Paskinon. Every Parsha that Moshe was Pusik, meaning made it small, where he put the, the Nuns, the Samachs, or we have a, 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 par, a, a Parsha by itself, then then we take it. But to lay Pusika Moshe Rabbeinu, lay Paskinon. Now, uh, any Parsha that Moshe did not stop. Literally, uh, you know that that's one long parsha. We can't just uh, cut it up. Okay, it doesn't work like that. We don't. We try not to to uh, cut it up ourselves. So we don't want to just uh, extract this one verse from the whole parsha. So the Gemara says, Parsha of Sitzis, Bipnek Ma'akavua. Why the Parsha of Sitzis that we say, Yomar Hashem Moshalemar, Dara Bnei Yisrael, with Sitzis, why do we use that Parsha to add to the uh, other two paragraphs of Shema and Vahaya? So the Gemara says, Amar of Yehuda Bar Chaviva, Bipnei Sheyish Bach Amisha Tavarim. There are five things. It's a packed Parsha, the little Parsha. There are five references in it. And what are they? Mitzvah Sitzis, Mitzrayim, going out of Egypt, all Mitzvahs, Vidas Minim. Okay, which is the uh, the uh, the the uh, like we said the heretics. Okay, and and not going after the heretics. Here Avera, uh, which is a reference to Avera being careful with Avera, which we'll see in a minute. The Hira and uh, and uh, a remembrance or, or a recognition of Avodah and staying away from Avodah So now, if you count that, the obvious question is is that you come out with six. Since this is the triumph, all mitzvahs das minim Hira Avera and Hira Avodah Zarah six. So how come it says five? So the uh, the commentaries explain that. Uh, well, let's just finish the Gemara. The Gemara will say, "Bishla Mahani Tlas Mifarshan." There are three that are clear in the parsha. What are they? All mitzvahs, the yoke of the mitzvahs. Tichsev the verse says, "For Yisim Osay, you will see them. The mitzvahs was hard to miss. Call mitzvahs Hashem, and it'll be act as a reminder for all the mitzvahs that are that, that Hashem has given us. So that's uh, the yoke of all the mitzvahs. Tzitzis, obviously, Tichsev the verse says, "Vasu lahem tzitzis," and you should make tzitzis. You see, it's Mitzrayim. Tichsev Asher. Says yes, Chameres Mitzrayim. I took you out of Egypt. El Adas Minim Hira Avera Vehira Vadizar Minol. And how do we know those three? To Tanya, we learned in the Brisa. It says Acharei Levavchem. The after your heart. It says Velasa Surah Achar Levavchem. You shouldn't go after your heart. What does that mean? After your heart? A reference to your heart, which is the seat of emotion. Zoom Minus. Okay. Now Minus is heresy. You shouldn't go after heresy, which is usually born for emotional reasons that people try to fit. Their uh, their da- their deot or their opinions, their intellectual opinions around what they emotionally feel. Okay, that's usually the beginning and end of where heresy comes from. V'chein Omer, the verse says, Omar Naval Belibo, the disgusting person, the says in his heart, Ain't a There is no God. 
Okay, so we see the reference of your heart. He says in his heart, there's no God. So that's heresy. Achre in Echem, it says you should not go after your eyes. Zuhir Avera, that's going after thinking of Avera, of sin, in regards to sexual sin. Okay, Shanem, like the verse says, Vayomer Shimshon El Aviv, Shimshon told his father and his parents, Osa Kachli, I want to tell, take the Lila, right, the Lila, Kihi Yishara Be'enai, because she is straight in my eyes, she's good in my eyes, right, the story over there, that Shimshon wasn't so well known, so he asked his parents to, to, uh, to have him marry, uh, to set up the, the, uh, the match. Okay, so we see it says she's good in my eyes. That the eyes are the windows of the soul, uh, and really that's what the eye sees, the eye covets and wants, and that's where the desires, especially specifically sexual desires, are born. Okay, and then atem zonim acharem that you are going after, that you're chasing zeher avodazara. That's uh, thoughts of avodazara of idol worship. And they went after achrei habaalim after the baalim. Okay, which was a reference to avodazara. Okay, so now again the six. Some of the commentaries, one of the uh, explanations the commentary gives why it says six, uh, if it, it, why it lists, why it says five, and then it lists six, is because in the in the parsha over there is the parsha of tzitzis. So it has five other things other than tzitzis. Meaning, the reference of Sitsis is what the Parsha is about. So it doesn't have to say that it has Sitsis in it, because that's what the whole Parsha is really about. The Parsha is about Sitsis. Uh, other commentaries explain that uh, Hira Vadizara uh, and Hira Das Minim is, is, is really the same concept as well. Okay? So uh, we'll take it from here uh, at the Mishnah tomorrow.